Yo, it's Yuji. Welcome back to Closet Talk. Okay, I just came back from class because, my god, I figured it out. Or, not me, but it is real. Time travel is a thing. Time, we could time travel. Time travel is definitely a possibility, at least through equations. Um, through practice, I don't know, probably not. Uh, we don't know yet. Um, but it is real, it is happening, it can happen, and I think I figured it out. Because, all right, whew, this episode is gonna be absolutely chaotic because you will see me progressively lose my mind, but it's okay, you 56 great, wonderful subscribers, you are about to witness a man just like absolutely lose it, all right? And we are gonna put this whiteboard to fucking work. All right, so first off, we need to understand relativity. Um, relativity is all saying that um, the speed of light is constant, all right? For, like, I'm not gonna go into detail, I'm not gonna bore anyone. Um, if anyone who is bored already, uh, screw you. Um, relativity is all saying that the speed of light C is constant and that the time difference of uh, delta T and delta T prime, which I'll get into later, is equal. And this is going to be something very important, okay? So, frame of reference is very important to understand, first off. So, frame of reference is deciding what and who or what... No, yeah. All right. Frame of reference is all about deciding in what perspective we think of. All right, so for example, distance, we need a, or for velocity, we need a distance and time, all right? Change in position over change in time. That is what di like the distance travel is all about, right? So in my perspective, like let's say my, I am the, holy crap. Yeah, I have my notes here because this, this gets into it. Okay, so I am the proper reference point, all right? Proper reference point is delta t prime all right let's say that or anything in the prime with the little dash right here that is the proper proper all right that is a proper frame of reference okay and anything in like without the prime sign without the dash is just relative to so this is relative to this in reference to this all right okay so fuck all this shit all right like you get the idea all right frame of reference uh delta t prime delta t all right so there is this equation that is about to blow everyone's mind it blew my mind because we're about to see it all right so here it is delta t prime equals delta t no oh delta t equals delta t prime over the square root of one minus velocity over the speed of light squared okay so this this section right here this bottom section is what's called Lawrence factor. Lawrence, my guy, you are fucking like, oh my God, this guy's a genius. All right, so what it what this is saying is that anything that is significantly slower than the speed of light is just gonna feel like no time dilation. All right, holy fuck, I gotta explain that too. All right, so this, ex this equation is gonna make a lot more sense as I explain time dilation to you right now in this instant. Time dilation is a real thing, okay? Because uh, we know it's real because of cosmic rays. Cosmic rays, all right? Cosmic rays are a real thing and they prove that time dilation is real, okay? All right, so we are gonna say that cosmic rays turn into cosmic rain when it hits Earth's atmosphere, right? So that we just get like a splatter of cosmic rays that like just go throughout the sky, right? But if in the frame of reference of the cosmic rays, they like don't, in their reference, they don't live long enough or travel a far, than, far enough distance to reach Earth's surface. They only roughly travel about like 400 meters, but the like distance, uh, the distance from the um, Earth's surface to the outermost atmosphere is like roughly 4,700 meters, give or take. Or like that, like we're just, no, whatever. Like it's, yes, 4,700, sure, whatever. We'll just say that's the number, right? But here's the catch. 
from our frame of reference because we are observing these cosmic rays and the cosmic shower they live for a longer time and therefore are able to travel all the way down to the earth's surface so my question is like i don't know my question is if humans didn't exist or if, like just like people with the knowledge of observing and understand like if we did not acknowledge the cosmic rays does that mean that the these would have never reached the earth's surface and would have just constantly died right so like time dilation is a thing because because of our perspective and our change of reference and us becoming the primary reference point right these cosmic rays are able to exist for a longer period of time and therefore reach the earth's surface like what the fuck all right this is this is really wild all right some of you may be so confused already i think this video is very bad but i don't care we're keeping with it okay so back to this equation all right lawrence my guy all right so all this is saying is that if v is very small then it's not gonna feel anything okay so that is why like cars like normal like transportation vehicles like 60 like keep in mind the speed of light is like fucking three times 10 to the eighth, like meters per second squared, all right? Like that is fast as fuck, and I don't think anyone can conceptually understand how fast that is, all right? So that's why like like 60 miles an hour compared to the speed of light is very small. So it's technically zero. So then that is like square root of one is just one. So that is why like delta T is same to like delta T prime because the re t change in time of the reference points and the observer of both observants are the same so my question is if uh, like this is where the time traveling situation comes in okay so if we have v to be the same as the speed of light that would mean that dude, oh my god like i still don't understand this that would mean that we are getting rid of this bottom section like we are dividing by zero at that point right and dividing by zero gets a little messy all right but technically it comes into fucking infinities right so that is where i think like if you are traveling like so hypothetically if you are traveling in like a rocket at the speed of light then you have officially stopped time right like conceptually that makes sense because like nothing is traveling anymore at that speed in reference to you and because you are now the main reference frame of reference so you are you have officially stopped time that's how you stop time by traveling at the speed of light okay so like that that makes sense but the question is this is where the youtube video title gets a little wonky because time traveling like, or which direction in time you're going forward or back is where I get lost. Because to just, like, break time itself, you need to go faster than the speed of light. But the moment you go faster than the speed of light, how do you know if you're going to go forward or backwards, right? So just so, like, how it, what is determining how you control that, right? So this is where my knowledge of physics ends. And I hope I learn the answer to this. But I probably won't. I'm gonna get off my feet. It really hurts. But technically, I just like. Oh my god. Yeah, I should title this video on how I figured out how to stop time, not time travel. But who cares? We're gonna keep it that way. So, frame of reference, time dilation is a real thing, okay? And because of time dilation being a real thing, stopping time itself should make sense, especially used under the equation of the Lorentz factor, right? So. That means that, yes, <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Like my brain can't process the fact that you could, this just exists. Like the co the whole thing with cosmic rays and the fact that because we observed it and we became the frame of reference that they continue to exist longer. is just really confusing or really fascinating to me. And I hope it fascinates you but it is just very confusing so the i think that's where we are like that this has to be where we're stuck right with time travel it's just like we know how to stop time we just don't know how to move forward or backwards because i feel like if you start it makes sense that if you go faster than the speed of light 
and like exceed it, that's when, well, but then you're taking the derivative of negative value. But maybe if you go faster than the speed of light, then that's what it, that's probably some warm, warp, wormhole shit. Oh my God. I just, I'm definitely lost. I'm sure you're lost, but in conclusion, let's do a quick recap, all right? So relativity is all it's saying is that speed of light is constant, okay? And that the, and then we had the frame of reference all stating that delta T prime, or like what you determine as the frame of reference is what time is relative to, and that the other, the, the observing factor is relative to I hope that made sense I may have worded it incorrectly I'm sorry if I did third factor is that cosmic rays and are proof that time dilation is a real thing and time dilation is really 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 cool and is why I believe time travel has to be a thing second we have um, the equation given to us and, and Lawrence factor, which I already crossed out, I'm sorry, but this equation right here is very important. And I believe that because of this equation, we know how to stop time and is by traveling at the speed of light itself. So that is how we stop time. But where I'm stuck and where my knowledge is capped at the moment is where, how we control our direction of time travel. <sighs> Holy crap. I hope I hope people made it to the end of the video. Like my god. Um well, thank you everyone so much for watching. I know this was a very confusing episode and very um not the usual, but hey, uh welcome to the channel. <laughs> it's been Yuji. Thanks for watching everyone.